A couple of years ago, I created a getting started in Studio One in less than 20 minutes video. And as I said, that was a couple of years ago. It was for Studio One 3. Now here we are, it's 2018 and we are up to Studio One 4. So I thought I would go ahead and make an updated video for those of you who may be just beginning with Studio One. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Now, this is what we are going to see when we first launch Studio One. This is the start page. And from here, we can actually connect with SoundCloud and we would just click on this button and input our account information. And in this way, we can add tracks directly from within Studio One. I'll close that out. We have an area for working with our macros, an area for any transfers that we're doing from our Personas account, the start song and project buttons. These are going to be visible whether you're on the start page, song page or project page and provide you access to navigate to any one of these areas at any time. We then have create a new song or a new mastering project, opening an existing document. Our recent files that we've been working on are going to show here. Uh, these will update as you continue to create songs, but if you'd like for one of these to stick around or for multiple to stick around, just hover to the left and click that pin icon and that will stick around. In the center area, we have an artist profile where you can actually click on the ellipsis here and then add an image that will represent the artist that you're working with or for yourself. We then have an artist name, genre, and website. So this is all metadata that will be included with your song once you export it. We have a SoundCloud tab here. Then we have a news feed, which is directly from Personas. We have demos and tutorials that you can make use of to help you become more familiar with Studio One. Now, at the bottom in the center area here, it's going to display the currently active audio device. We can uh, click there to take us to the options menu, the audio setup tab, and we can make a change here to a different audio device that we may have connected. The control panel is going to take us to the proprietary software for that device where we can make additional changes. I'll go ahead and cancel out. Then Configure audio device is going to take us to the same area that we just took a look at. We can check for updates and I am currently running the latest version. So let's go ahead and create a new song and head over to the song page because this is where we will be working. At least most of us, I'll just call that song page. And I'm actually going to click this button here to change the location to where this song file will be stored, my desktop. I'll select that folder and then below that we can choose the sample rate, resolution, time base, song length, song length, and so on. Now we have a stretch audio files to song tempo. So this with any audio files that you bring into Studio One, as long as it has BPM data encoded into it, it's going to stretch that file to whatever you have your song tempo set to. So let's hop on over to the song page by clicking OK. Now, if you feel a bit overwhelmed by the song page, we're going to break everything down really quickly here. So there are four main areas and in the center, we have our arrange view where all of our MIDI and audio data is going to be uh, displayed and available for editing and arranging to the right of that. We have our browser and if you notice down at the bottom, we have browse and this is how we can show or hide that we can also press F5 on our QWERTY keyboard to show or hide as well. Now we have these instruments, effects, loops, uh, links in the center home tab. Uh, by clicking, we're taking to that tab. We can also click on the tabs directly at the top. So if we'd like to bring an instrument in, most of the uh, actions within Studio One are drag and drop. So we can simply click, hold and drag, say this Mai Tai, synthesizer into our song that's loaded up and we can choose a patch from up above here. There are a variety to choose from, but I'm going to go ahead and close that out for the moment. And we can see that we have an instrument track that has been created for our Mai Tai. If we'd like to work with a loop, then we can click on the loops tab and then navigate to wherever our loops are or the particular type we can sort by instrument. These are based by tier. So if I choose style, then that is going to change 
to the various styles that are available. And what you have here is going to depend on your version of Studio One. I'm using Studio One Professional, so this is going to have more content than, say, if you're working with audio, uh, artists, the artist version. So we've set that to style. We can see style. Now, if I open up the blues folder, the next way that we're sorting is by character. So we can see the character here. If I were to change that to instrument, then this will update in a second. We can see we're sorted by instrument. And then finally, if I open up, say, the bass folder, we're sorting by vendor. And we can change that third sort version here. But I want to go ahead and bring a loop in. Again, just drag and drop. I'll close out the browser. And we are, uh, we've created an audio track for our loop just by dragging it in. And at any time we'd like to add a track, say for recording a vocal or a live instrument, we can press T on the QWERTY keyboard and we're presented with the Add Tracks dialog. We can also click on the plus symbol here to get the same window. And then we can choose the type. We can name it and choose the type here. We can add audio, instrument, automation, or folder. If we're gonna choose audio, we can uh, choose the format, whether it's mono or stereo. By default, it's going to be on auto color, but if we deselect that, we can open up this color palette and uh, make that track whatever color we'd like. I'll just choose this reddish color and click OK to create that track. We can adjust its size by hovering at the border when we get these double arrows, clicking and dragging. We also have a global control for adjusting the track size down below. We see normal is listed. If we click that arrow, we can change that to large on down to minimal, which is incredibly tiny or small. And then we have tiny it's there. If I hold shift and press E, we can zoom in vertically uh, like so. E is going to zoom in, W will zoom out, and that's when you're holding shift. If I just press E without holding shift, we zoom in in the arrange view horizontally. Pressing W, we zoom out. And in the bottom right corner, we have a slider which will accomplish the same thing. Now, we also have this ruler up above that we can click, hold, and drag up or down to zoom in or out or navigate within our song. Now we've seen the browse button that we can use to access the browser. Next to that we have mix, which will bring up the mix console. And we can see our Mai Tai synthesizer. Our channel for that is brought in. And these are identified with this kind of keyboard icon, our instrument tracks. Then here is the loop that we brought in. And this is kind of a waveform icon here, which is going to denote our audio tracks. We can uh, right click to insert a bus channel and we can see that this icon denotes a bus channel. I'll right click and we can add an effects channel and we can see that we just have effects to represent that. If we'd like to send any of our tracks that we created earlier to our bus, then we can simply highlight that. And then if I come here and pull that up, we can see that it's being sent to the main outs, but if I click there, we can then send that to bus one, or we could have chosen our effects one, which would be a, an effects send. Now we can add inserts to our instrument tracks or our audio tracks, or even our bus and effects by clicking up above the plus symbol here for inserts. I'll go to the personas folder and just put on an alt auto filter and that loads up. And we can see that that is listed here. At any time we'd like to access it, we can just double click to open that up. And I'll press mix the, the mix button to close out the mixer. And the inspector we can access by clicking the eye. And I just wanted to show that we have access to the inserts and sends here as well. So if we highlight our loop, where I put the auto filter, we can access it from here as well, as well as adding new inserts or sends. We can control our tempo and time stretch for the loop here. 
And I'll go ahead and close out that inspector for now and come back down to the bottom right corner just to show you that the final button that we have is edit and that's for accessing our editor. We can also, if we have a audio sample or loop loaded here, we can just double click on that to open up the editor as well. And from within here, we can do some finer edits to our audio. We have tools that are listed here, and these are similar to the tools that we have in our arrange view. So let's start with the tools in the arrange view. And these are married to the number keys on your QWERTY keyboard. So number one is going to be our smart arrow tool. Number two will be our range tool. Three is the split tool. Four, the erase tool. Five is the paint tool. Six is the mute tool. Seven is the bend tool. And eight is our listen tool. So if I open up the edit window again, we can see that these are pretty much similar for audio. But if I, let me activate the arrow tool again, and I'm gonna double click on our Mai Tai synthesizer track to create a MIDI part, which is basically a container for our MIDI performances or MIDI data. If I double click, then I can go ahead and add some MIDI notes into here. And I just wanted to show that our tools change up a little bit. We lose our range tool, which is this one, when we are working with a MIDI part and MIDI notes. And we've got another ruler here that we can use to navigate and click, hold and drag, zoom in and out. We've got a slider here for the same thing. So similar controls as the arrange view when we're working in the editor. We've got our velocity information here in our parameter automation lane. We've got modulation, pitch bend, and after touch. So these are all things that we can automate. If there is a particular parameter that is not listed here, we can always right click on one of these tabs and click add, or come to the ellipsis here and open up the automation uh, control. So this is for the Mai Tai, and these are all of the parameters on the Mai Tai that are available for automation. So if I come to the filter, the cutoff, I can double click, that's added here. We close, and now we have cutoff. So at this point, I can come to the paint tool, and if you notice this down arrow, if we click and hold on that, we can choose a separate mode for the paint tool. So if I choose sign, then when I click hold and drag, we're creating sign automation for our filter cutoff. Okay, so if I were to play that back, we can see that there, the automation for the cutoff is being applied. And we know that a parameter has automation because it has this circle that shows up in the middle, whereas these other ones do not show that. If we'd like to remove the automation, we can right click um, and that's actually not showing up as being able to remove for some reason, but we can always come down below here, activate our arrow tool, and just be sure that everything is selected, press the delete on your keyboard, and we take those out of there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hide the editor by pressing F2. Let's move back up to the top and take a few, uh, or take a look at a few of these other tools here available. So this question mark here is gonna open up the info view, and that's gonna display different information about things you can accomplish, uh, depending on the tool that you have in the area that you are hovering over. We'll go ahead and hide that. And then next to that, we have audio bend, which will open up the bend panel, which we can use for stretching and compressing our audio, as well as finding the transients of uh, audio samples or loops that we bring in. And Studio One can automatically create slices by using this bend panel. Next to that, we have strip silence. And this is gonna allow you to strip out any silent areas of recordings you may have done based on the settings that you've made here, say to the open and close threshold, etc. Next to that, we can access a in-depth quantize panel for our song. We then have an area or a panel for working with and managing our macros. Next to that, we have IQ, which is input quantize. 
Now, as long as this is active, when we are recording MIDI, that MIDI will be automatically quantized upon recording uh, based on whatever we have our quantized value set to here. Now, this quantized panel is similar to the other one that we saw here. It's just, you know, not as in-depth, but more easily accessible. So right now, our quantized value is set to 16th notes. And if I zoom in a bit, we can see in our ruler, as well as our range view, this grid here is based in 16th note subdivisions. If I were to click this down arrow and change that to, say, quarter notes, we can see that our ruler updates, as well as our arrange view, to show our change. We then have a setting for time base and snap. Next to that, we can toggle our snap function on and off with this icon here. We can also press in on the QWERTY keyboard to turn that on and off. Next to that, we have ripple edit. So if we drag in uh, MIDI or audio parts, it will push the other parts out of the way and allow you to insert that. Uh, we then have our auto scroll, cursor follows edit position. We have a scratch pad. So if we activate that, then we can use this to experiment with a song that we're working on um, by highlighting this area here. Then we have a video player. So if we'd like to compose to video, we can access the video player by clicking this icon here. We then have start song and project. And these three buttons are gonna be available whether we're on the start page or the project page. This takes us back to the start page as we just saw. If I wanna get back to my song, if we had multiple songs open, we can click this down arrow and access any of them here. Since I only have the one, all I need to do is click on song and we're taken back to uh, our song. Now at the bottom, we have our transport controls. Traditional controls that we see in most dolls, stop, play, record. We have a loop function. So if I, let's come back to this area here. In the ruler area, I'm gonna click we see the pencil tool when we hover on this gray line. This is going to give us our uh, loop markers, and we can click, hold, and drag to set those. And now that they've been set around our MIDI part and loop, I can click this icon to activate looping. So now this is going to continue to cycle over and over. Next to that, we can see our left and right loop position marker positions there. We've got our click or metronome. With this icon, we can turn on and off our click track. We've got our timing, which is in 4-4. We can set the key for our song here, our tempo. So if I click once, I can then put in a new value, or I can repeatedly click on tempo to manually tap in a tempo. And this can actually be mapped to MIDI as well. We have our master meters, master fader here. This, if I open up the mix console, this ties in with the main out. I'll control click to set that back to zero dB and hide that mix console. And we're just about out of time. Uh, to the left here, we have performance where we can monitor the performance of our CPU and disk. If we choose to show devices, we can actually see what's going on with our my tie and our auto filter effect. I'll go ahead and deselect that and close this out. And so I think we are about out of time here. Uh, that's about 20 minutes. And this has been the updated getting started in Studio One in less than 20 minutes for version four. I hope that it's been helpful. And I am also offering one-on-one -on -one training with Studio One Four. And this is done over the web through a web conferencing program called Zoom. So if you are just getting started and feeling overwhelmed and you'd like one-on-one -on -one training where I can see your actual desktop and you can choose to allow me to control Studio One and I can guide you through the different functions, features, and uh, how to lay your tracks down, that is available. Information on that can be found in the description area below if you're interested and want to reach out. And I think we will wrap up here. So I hope this has been helpful for you and thanks for watching.